Thank you. Yeah, I can already see the many priority uh, have been changed. Uh, I'm still, we are still waiting just one more country to join the, from Cambodia. I can see, I can see the Cambodia here. Some four, yes. Okay, so I think it's because of the, our the time constraint, and then uh, we will just start now. I hope everyone can hear me very well. So good afternoon or good morning or good evening. So depending on where you are, so I'm Hassan, I'm program officer of the UFD Secretariat, and I will be the moderator for today webinars. And then I would like to really welcome everyone or our partner who are here today. And then this is a really uh, special because this is a full, for us, it's the first webinar for briefing on this guideline. Uh, of our uh, site partnership, national partnership sister site program. Also, well, this is also very special because uh, we are normally having uh, this type of the, the, the gathering, the online gathering with the government partners separately, but it's a very, very uh, special that we have today. So I hope that for the next one and a half hour that we can uh, have uh, some chance to enter each other's uh, before our map 11 schedule next year. So, so we are very happy and very pleased that uh, many participants are joining today uh, regardless of the year at the time schedule. And thank you very much. So before we start, I will just quickly uh, go through our rundown today. So uh, if um, uh, the uh, Yuji uh, can uh, come to the next page of the program, then I can, uh, I can go through the rundown. Next page, please. Okay, I think it's a little Sorry, some... my computer is frozen for some reason. <laughs> Let me get, get it fixed to repeat. Okay. So the, the second problem is this is a unpredictable always, so please. Uh, I'm seeking for your understanding on this. So we already did the rehearsal for 30 minutes and then just it happened just now. So uh, please uh, wait a second, please. I'm so sorry about that. It's all right, okay. Great. Oh, everyone can just give me a second. Yes. Okay, so the, let me just quickly go over the today's rundown. So following our opening session by our EFP chair, Rob Keller, then our project consultant who have been backbone of this guideline devoted project will introduce the background, concept and aim and expecting outcome of our project. And then presentation from two government uh, we share their case study on their national partnership or sister site program. And at the very end, a panel and open discussion will be held to welcome me and uh, welcome me all your thoughts and questions on the guidelines. So it will be free discussions uh, and they will be posted by our chief executive, uh, the Doug Watkins letter. So, and then move to the next, uh, just to giving you the quick housekeeping notes. So when you wish to speak, please click the reaction button that uh, there is a button uh, in the bottom of the screen. And then uh, select the hand emoji, uh, hand emoji so that I can recognize or Doug can recognize better that you wanted to uh, the, the, the raise a comment or any reaction button would be helpful for us to understand how you feel. And then we also encourage you to leave a comment and question on the chat box below. There is a chat box uh, there, so please leave any the comment there. Then we can uh, we can pick the question as well. And then another thing is very important. I think that we are doing very well now. So, so please unmute yourself uh, after you speaking out. Otherwise, there will be issue of the echoing. So please make sure that it is unmuted yourself. And then when you try to speak, and then please click the unmute button again that you can you can speak. Okay, so this is our uh, outline and the housekeeping now. So without use, I wanted to now start off and I'd like to invite our the EFB chairs and Mr. Rob Keller uh, to the floor to the opening this session and the webinar today. 
Oh, thank you so much. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All right, excellent. So uh, good afternoon, good evening, and I guess good morning to some of you. I'm in Anchorage, uh, 10 p.m. here or 10.07 p.m. So I am Rob Kaler, Chair of the East Asian Australasian Flyway Partnership, and it's an honor to welcome everyone to this webinar and looking forward to the development of, of these guidelines for sister sites and, and national site partnerships. As you all know, the Flyway Partnership was established in 2006, and the goal um, is conserving migratory water birds, their habitats, and the livelihoods of the people that depend on them. And, and this latter part, the livelihood of the people that depend on them, really resonates with me and, and connects us to the Flyway sites that we're going to be talking about. Uh, because the Flyway Partnership is an informal agreement among the partners, international cooperation is, is crucial to the conservation of, of our water birds and the safeguarding of these resources. But equally crucial to successful water bird conservation are national partnerships, which we'll discuss today, but those partnerships are what help support the national coordination of things like the Asian water bird census and uh, the, the World Migratory Bird Day. Um, during the 10th meeting of the partners in 2018, uh, we, the partners, adopted the 10-year strategic plan to help implement actions to safeguard our flyways, migratory water birds, and habitats. And that strategic plan guides the partners to enhance the SEPA for communication, education, participation, and awareness, to enhance research and monitoring activities, to build capacity for effective habitat and water bird management, and to develop flyway-wide approaches to improve conservation the conservation status of, of migratory water birds. The strategic plan also guides the partners to promote the development of the Flyway Site Network, one of the Flyway Partnership's great successes currently with 150 sites. The Flyway Network site encompasses all of these objectives that I mentioned, SEPA, enhancing research and monitoring, building capacity, and developing flyway-wide approaches. So by by doing what we're doing today, we are promoting and advancing our strategic um, intent and our plans. So input and discussions to support development of these guidelines for the national partnerships and sister sites will need focus on building relationships among and between Flyway Network sites. With that goal, I encourage us all to mobilize our resources, exchange information experience, build up capacity and knowledge from grassroots to decision-making levels, and work together for the conservation of, of migratory water birds and their habitats, which connect us all. And, um, and just wonderful to see everybody here, looking forward to being able to meet uh, at the meeting of partners in 2022. And, um, and with that, thanks to the Secretariat for organizing and uh, keeping this, uh, this effort moving forward. Thanks. Thank you very much, Chair. So, uh, since uh, our chair just uh, has started the introduction, so I wanted to invite everyone just to have a just a quick uh, the introduction. But before that, I think it's, uh, to prepare that, I would like to have a quick group photos ourselves. So, if you are able to turn on the video, and then uh, then uh, we will have a quick uh, group photo before we move to the next session. So uh, please uh, turn on the, your video. Yes, I can see everyone is now turning on, including our staff member, please, so that we don't have the, the dark the screen in the middle. So for us, so please turn on the, your video. Don't be shy. <laughs> so this is a very important moment that we capture everyone's contributing to UG and then Cantorian, yeah, uh, that's Stanford, I'm sorry for the poor pronunciation of the name. So please, if you can turn on, so please turn on your the video so that we can have a good photo. Okay, so we will try the twice. <laughs> so please make sure that you keep your smiling <laughs> for the, another 10 seconds, okay? I will, I will say the one, two, three, and they need to be paused in a little bit so that the, you know, our staff member can uh, the capture it. Okay, one, two, three. Good. Was it good try? Just one more time, please. Yes, it's always tricky, but otherwise, yes, we make a little bit ugly group photo. So we need to make sure. Okay, so we already practice. So 
when I after I say it's three, and please pause a little bit. Okay, I can see more face now. Okay, one, two, three. Good. Okay, thank you very much for your cooperation. So please turn off, please don't turn off the, your video. So now I would like to invite everyone to just uh, just quickly, quickly uh, to introduce yourself because this is again the first like a time for the our partner to gathering the on, online like in this uh, format. So I wanted to just ask one uh, by one that just uh, giving us, letting us the, your name and the where, which city and country are you from? And then uh, how long have you been working with EFP? So this is, yeah, now so you can see the, what you can tell us so that we can understand who you are. Okay, so let me start in, I will just call for the, from the, the what I can see from the, my screen. So Mr. Hao, you are the first one. Okay, hello, hi everybody. My name is uh, Chun Bing, I can call me Hao, this is Ian. Uh, I used to be director at Sungai Bulo. Now I'm in another department and covering for Shu Fen, who is not available today. Uh, I'm based in the city of Singapore, in the country of Singapore. And I've been working uh, with EFP since I joined Sungai Bulo and that was, I think in 2008. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Doug, you're on, uh, please unmute yourself, please. So Doug Watkins, um, I've been with the partnership since uh, before it started um, and now uh, have been chief executive here uh, for just over one and a half, half years um, um, and here in Incheon, um, whereas I'm actually uh, based back in, in Canberra, Australia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hello, I'm uh, Jennifer George, and I'm um, your consultant um, working on this project. Now, I'm based in New Zealand, and I live in our, our largest city, which is a city of one and a half million, um, which is probably quite small compared to everybody. Um, I've been connected with this project for about six months now, and um, also connected here in New Zealand with Miranda. Um, for a number of years. Thank you. First, next, Moko Sang, please. Hi, my name is Tomoko Ichikawa from Japan. Uh, second, the position is. Um, sorry. <laughs> Did you promote? Um, I'm from the Ministry of the Environment and the working years with EFP is. I remember I used to work in a flyway network site in Tokyo Bay, which was from 2000 to 2004, I believe. So it might be before the <laughs> secretariat is there, but I was in the secretariat from 2014 to 2018. And after that, I'm working together with the secretariat from the Ministry of the Environment. Thank you. Thank you, Tomoko-san. David Rui, David? Next. 안녕하세요. 대한민국의 이영은 사무관입니다. 어, 제가 좀 이렇게 영상으로 만나 뵙게 돼서 반갑고요. 제가 영어가 좀 소통 관계로 우리 에디터가 대신 인사 말 전하겠습니다. 감사합니다. Uh, thank you very much. I am Yaman Lee, the deputy director of the Ministry of Environment of the Republic of Korea. I'm glad to work with you. And I came to the Biodiversity Division a month ago, and I'm the replacement for Harry Harry Nguyen. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee. Uh, also, can I invite the David? David, can you unmute? Uh, probably you have uh, some problem with the sound. Okay, then uh, let me invite David later on. Um, Mr. Ho? Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. Yeah. My name is uh, Wee Heng Ho. Uh, I'm working in National Institute of Biological Resources in Korea. Uh, yeah, thank you. 
Kamsamita, Ms. Prefa, thank you very much. And uh, Aprianko, I'm sorry, my poor pronunciation here. Please, uh, let me unmute you. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Aprianko. Uh, I work in Western Support. My position is a uh, forest ecosystem specialist. Uh, as far as I know, uh, uh, we have already worked with AAP uh, since two, 2006. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Pierre Khan. Ms. Pierre Khan. Sorry for the pronunciation. Okay. Yeah, hi, hi, I'm P. Khan uh, from Thailand. I'm a professor in university and I work with a Thailand focal point. Uh, I'm, and also I'm a wetland scientist too. I work with a Sarah's Crane reintroduction project. And two years ago, I worked with our, our ACB about the mitigation bird and wetland assessment. Thank you. Thank you, good. Okay, Chris. I can see you, Chris. Next. Hello, uh, good morning from uh, the UK. Uh, I'm Chris Rostron. I'm the International Engagement Manager, manager here at WWT, uh, based in uh, a very small place uh, called Slimbridge on the Severn Estuary in the west of, the, uh, west of England. Uh, I have worked, I guess, with the EAFP since I started my post here in 2008, um, maybe when we met uh, at COP10. Uh, of Ramsar, and now I'm on the CEPA working group uh, helping out uh, with that side of things. Nice to be here. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chris, always. Uh, uh, Mr. Porras? Uh, yes. Hi, hi, everyone. Um, this is Florence Sim from Singapore. Um, I work at Sungai Bulu Wetland Reserve, and I do outreach here. So I have been working with EAFP related work since I joined in 2018. And I hope to be able to see everyone in the near future soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, um, Sam for me. Yes. Uh, good, good afternoon, everyone from Cambodia. My name is Sampo. I'm working with Balai International Cambodia Program. To on uh, my position is a wetland project coordinator to consult the wintering site for through scan in Cambodia. And I have worked with the uh, EAASP since we designate Anlong Spring as a 144 flyway network site in mm -hmm. Cambodia. Thank mm -hmm. you for today. Thank you very much. Uh, next, I can see Tanker Radhi. Sorry for the uh, Chan Gary Yadi. Sorry for the pronunciation, but this is what I can see now. Okay. So, yeah. Nobody's there. Okay, let me move to the next. Uh, Palisa. I miss it. Uh, Palis. Yeah. Okay, I think so, yeah, there's uh, some of the people I know some sounds problem. Uh, okay, so th there are also a the number of our STEM members sitting here. So, but due to the time, I will quickly skip. I hope that there will be another session that I can we can introduce our STEM member here at the end. So, thank you very much for the cooperation. So, since we are running out of time, I would like to announce officially invite Miss Jennifer Jars. Uh, who will introduce the project and then giving a better understanding of why we are here and then why we are joined today for the first webinar of the, this issue and the, which was discussed in the, our map. So I hope that this session can be giving you know, more ideas of the, uh, our plan and the background and then how, what is our timeline for before we having another, another case study. So Jennifer, floor is yours. Jennifer? 
Can you hear me now? Yes. All oh, right. Um, I'll start again. Um, and just, just good afternoon and good evening, good morning. It's wonderful to have so many of you from so many countries represented today. Um, just thanks for taking the time to represent your country. I would also like to acknowledge you all as individuals. Everyone's got a great deal of knowledge and experience to share. And just want to thank each of you for that time. Um, my role today is just to tell you a bit about the project. But really what I want is to hear more from you, people that are working in this space. Um, as you heard from Rob, the project originated in MOP 10 and um, it was to create guidance for the developing of the national partnerships um, and sister site partnerships and review of the flyway network sites and all those things flow together. Um, so I think if we just move on to the next slide. Yeah, thank you. Um, if we looked at the, the overarching questions that we have here, there's a common theme that in, in the work that we've done so far, it's all about the flows from relationships. So um, between the, the sites, um, the more formal sister site partnerships, and the internal relationships in the countries that make up a national partnership and that feed all the information, the aspirations that go up to the meeting of partners. So relationships are what is key. So today we're going to listen to um, two presentations, but we're also going to take away a lot um, from the questions that you ask. So don't, um, don't think that any question is too small or too silly. Don't be afraid to ask deep penetrating questions um, because we're here to learn from you as the participants who have the experience. So if we move on to the site um, partnerships, what are they? Many of you will know, they have, have a deep understanding of this, but you know, there are about 1400 sites on the flyway and that's um, that are crucial to our migratory birds. Um, 149, 150 are um, um, EAAFP network sites. And there's just some of those sites that are linked to each other. So that's what we're looking to grow and change and develop. So the next slide. No. Oh. So I think we've got a bit mi mixed up here with our um, slides. Um, so we're looking. So uh, I think I'll just. I'll go back and follow the slides, I think. If I can just take a moment here. Oh, what is the national partnership? So one of the, the um, one of the key structure that we're looking at developing and asked to be to review is the mechanism called the mass national partnership. Now when we were when we started here, we're not really sure exactly what national partnerships were and where they existed. What we've discovered is that there are some excellent national partnership structures with great work plans um, flowing from the MOP strategic plan. And the example today that we're going to hear from is Japan. Now, Japan is a sophisticated and well-organized structure. Um, and you know, I want to honor Tomoko who will be talking with us today um, in comparison, here in New Zealand, um, we have like one main flyway network site, as Japan has 33, and we have a small group of people who really know each other well and see each other quite regularly. And that is an internal mechanism of communication. It's informal, but it's effective because we're a small country. So we'll, um, we'll look at um, compare that with Japan, who is also effective, but on a much bigger scale. So the lesson there is that the elements that make up a good national partnership exist, whether we're big or whether we're small. So this is why we're examining all these questions so that we can identify the important elements for an effective national partnership. 
whatever the size, the culture, um, or the political structure. So when we're listening to the presentations today, some of the things we want to hear, not only is your information, but also what comes out of the questions, because that's what tells us where you know the different countries are and what they can offer, um, what you can offer this project. Um, so if we can move on to the next slide. So see, these are some of the big questions um, that we hope to be able to address in um, the guide, the guidance is the national, you know, why have them? Um, so if we move on to the next one, um, you know, what, what does it do what, if on a, you know, an annual basis? There's some of the, some ideas here, um, just as a launch pad. And as you'll see down the bottom there, just need that if, as we go through, if you can add your ideas and your questions in the chat below, um, that's, that would be really good. Um, the next point. And so these elements here, the national focal point leads the coordination of the national um, partnership. And so I'm um, exploring what role, what is the role of the national focal point um, and the national plan, how that comes about and the communication channels relationships. And the next one. So who might be involved? Um, who's that? And these are some examples that there might be some more as well. So if you could feed in your thoughts in the chat. And as we move on to the next slide. <laughs> so we've gone back here um, to, it's all about relationships right, between the, the network sites. The purpose here, as um, Rob was saying, is to assist the flyway wide collaboration. I mean, that collaboration relationships are important. Um, share knowledge, increase capacity, and promote awareness. And the big question is how we build those relationships for the benefit of our migratory words and their birds and their habitats. Uh, next slide. Um, I think I just, I mentioned this before, out of 1,400, 149. Um, so the sister sites, you know, what, um, yeah. Next slide. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so if we look at, at currently, um, where are they? This, this is how they're spread across our flyway. See, some of them are short distances, longer distances. And so what is interesting, you know, for us as well is, you know, how these relationships come about, how they develop, how long they last. Um, and so, you know, we, most of these um, sister sites here have been, have been in existence for quite some time. And so that's why we're looking to increase because there are, um, we need, we need to grow this um, um, for the benefit of the whole flyway. Um, so we're very lucky today to have that of the 10 sister site partner um, sites on the flyway, eight of them are represented today in our webinar. I really appreciate all that representation. So, um, so we're looking at the sister sites and there's a series of questions we will be examining so if we look at the next slide. Um, so here, so here's some of the questions that will follow up. How to begin, how do you partner, how do you develop objectives, the activities, challenges, um, and you know, how long it should be. And I think um, Tomoko will will address some of those um, uh, and how that's worked in Japan, which will be really valuable. And your next slide. So as we come to the end of what I would have going to say is that um, like this is what we've been doing to find the answers that during May, June, July this year, um, we've done questionnaires, meetings and interviews and now this webinar. And so, you know, we've started off questions, questionnaires, but you know, that doesn't get to the real, um, the, um, the human element of um, the relationship. So that's why we've, um, had the meetings and now come to the webinar. So the next, the next slide. 
So here's the just here's the timeline for your information. We've been doing the interviews. We've got the first webinar. The second webinar will be um, an opportunity for you to see where we've got up to, um, give feedback on the first draft of those guidelines. And then in October, um, the final opportunity for submissions for the final guidelines. And then hopefully you'll all be meeting at the MOP 11 in Brisbane next year where um, they will be tabled. Um, and so that's about it for me at the moment. I um, We've got these country representatives, so we've got a lot of time into preparing the presentations for us. We're very grateful, just can't say how grateful we are for your generous contribution um, and of sharing the knowledge, experience. Um, they and the responses as you, you as participants are more important. So it's time for me to finish and to listen. Thank you. Okay, Jennifer, thank you very much. So as Jennifer just explained that this is a timeline is uh, we have been scheduling and then it's a, we aim to announce and uh, share this first batch, uh, the, I think it's in August and there will be a the followed webinar again in the end of the October. And then the, hopefully if we have a mark 11 and with our best wishes in the next year that so we can launch and then we can have a, the final review on the decision paper. So the decision paper. So that is our the uh, strategy timeline we are having for. So, uh, but we realize that after we send out the first interview request to the many of the government partners, still that uh, there is a gap of understanding on the concept of national and the site partnership. And then particularly there's uh, some of the demand and the request of understanding more on sister side program as well, which is they were not familiar with. So that's why we wanted to have more of the case study to be presented uh, by two countries. So I'm, we are very pleased to have this country now. So I want to start uh, with inviting the, uh, my former colleagues and then the, uh, our focal point in Japan. So Ms. Tomoko Ichikawa, and then she would like she will share us that uh, the national partnership in Japan. So uh, so I will yes uh, uh, to keep my uh, the part short and the Tomoko, I'd like to invite you. So yes, we will control your PPT as well, Tomoko. Thank you, Hezon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to give this presentation on the national partnership in Japan. I am Tomoko Ichikawa from the Ministry of the Environment of Japan. This photograph was taken at the workshop for Flyway National Monitoring this February. The participants are from the network sites and they are involved in the monitoring. And young senior or pro, from the office or from the field, we can see many smiley faces. Next slide, please. Thirty-three wetlands in Japan have been included in the flyway site network of the EAAP. In order to work together, we have developed a national partnership. First, three national networks are formed in Japan, the Crane, Anatide, and Showbird networks. These networks inherited the networks from each species group formed under the Asia-Pacific Migratory Waterbird Conservation Strategy, the predecessor of the EAAFP. Each flyway network site belongs to one or more of the three national species group networks. Depending on the species and number of individuals they support, currently there are seven crane network sites 20 Anatide network sites and 12 Shoba network sites. Next, please. Secondly, we have this structure of the national partnership. The MOE is the governmental partner of the EAAFP. And the MOE sets up 
a national secretariat, which is the main body that implements activities in Japan. The national secretariat carries out activities of the network in coordination with related organizations, including the MOE. Additionally, the MOE appoints national coordinators for each of the three species group networks. Each coordinator plays a central role in promoting partnership activities, such as liaisons and coordination with network sites and support for awareness raising. On the ground conservation activities are conducted by local governments and or local organizations under contracts. Next, please. The coordinator of each species group network publishes newsletters several times a year. The newsletters are distributed to the flyway network sites in Japan. They allow for the exchange of information on the activities, news, such as the arrival of migratory water birds, information on World Migratory Bird Day, and SIPA activities at each site, and information on avian flu. Each coordinator also operates a mailing list for respective species group. Numbers of sub subscribers are approximately 50 for crane, 270 for anatidae, and 220 for showbird mailing list. The subscribers include staff from local governments and NGOs, and people involved in conservation and research, and general citizens. Facebook pages are also created for national network and each species group to distribute information. These pages are voluntarily developed and are managed by the respective coordinator and experts of each species group. Web pages for public awareness raising was also launched. In addition, last year, the Showbird Network held a Showbirds online meeting with video and poster presentations as a network activity that can be still conducted under the COVID-19 situation. Next, please. This is about the National Liaison Meeting. The MOE holds a National Liaison Meeting every year since 2006 to share information on the EAAFP. The progress of domestic activities and the conservation status of migratory water birds and their habitats are shared in this meeting. And uh, in this meeting, participants discuss strategies and priorities for future activities and also discuss to sort out some issues. Participants include the MOE, the National Sec Secretariat, coordinators for each species group, experts, EAAFP NGO partners, and relevant offices in Japan. The main agenda of the national liaison meetings are reporting of the previous year's activities and sharing of plans and activities from the national secretariat and coordinators of each species group network and matters related to the MOP and other agendas such as implementation of national activities in line with the EAFP strategic plan. Next, please. Achievement through the national liaison meeting is written here. The first is that information sharing is supporting the effective and efficient implementation. Domestic activities are conducted by species groups. So the liaison meeting enables stakeholders of national partnership to regularly 
grab the progress for of activities and share necessary information beyond species group boundaries. And a cooperative relationship has been established through it. The second point is that the input of coordinators and experts in reviewing activities and discussing possible improvements are meaningful to make activities more significant. In 2019, the National Realism Meeting introduced a small group workshop format that allowed for more in-depth discussions. The third is that sharing information on EAAFP and trends outside Japan promotes active discussion on the direction and priority actions and allows for the consideration of opinions within the country. In addition, summarizing domestic efforts at the liaison meeting helps contribute by sharing experiences with EAAFP in the future. Next, please. This is one of the example workshop for flyway network site managers. Training workshops are held about once a year for local government officials who serves as the site managers and NGO staff involved in the management. The aim is to promote the understanding of the EAAFP framework and share the efforts and issues of each site, utilize the network for conservation and cooperation among the flyway network sites. So far, the MOE has held information exchange meetings on a species group basis and training of the EAFP and sharing each flyway net, ah, sorry. Um, the MOE has held such meetings on a species group basis and training workshops on a regional basis. The workshop was successful in promoting the understanding of the EAAFP and sharing each flyway network site's efforts. In particular, the awareness raising effect was high among local government officials who were newly assigned to the position. The inclusion of representatives, not only from the local government, but also from the local NGOs, enhanced communication between the local government and the private uh, uh, local NGOs and private sector. In 2020, a workshop for flyway national monitoring was held with the theme of identifying migration trends by using the flyway site network and strengthening the monitoring system at the flyway network sites. After discussing the importance of SIPA in all levels to ensure participation of citizens and resource mobilization, a national SIPA working group was established and now holding a monthly web meeting. Next, please. This is the key to make this approach successful. I find that network according to the species group works well to mobilize people for active participation and enthusiasm. Flyvent network sites with same species share, uh, flyway network sites with same species, they share common interest and similar issues they are facing too. And share, uh, shared activities, even information sharing, this benefit to work together and is inspire each other. Especially the mailing list of mailing list it functions also as a periodical reminder about the EAAFP. And the second point, activities conducted together, such as workshop for site managers and liaison meeting, are the chances 
to know each other in person and stakeholders, including, including site managers can obtain encouragement. The third point, NGOs that store accumulated knowledge and the, who connect stakeholders are also the key to secure continuation. Often the government officials change frequently. So NGOs that are continuously involved in the conservation of flyway network site help smooth implementation and building on the past achievements. Next, please. Challenges and opportunities, mostly challenges. Um, it is not easy to immediately link the points discussed in the liaison meeting to the actual activities. It is important to consider how to ensure that the points discussed can be incorporated into the national networks activities. It is also essential to share these discussions with local government officials of flyway network sites and local NGO staff involved in the site management to develop the existing activities and link them to the new initiatives. In addition, this may be the same everywhere, but the level of the budget allocated always affect the scale of activities. Also, because the work of the EAFP National Secretariat is conducted on a yearly basis in Japan as a contracted project of the MOE, it is unclear which organization will undertake the work each year. Moreover, due to the gap before the work for the relevant fiscal year is officially undertaken, it will be difficult to conduct continuing activities throughout the year. Next, please. Key elements. Um, I believe the important point is that the guidance can tell the objective of building the national network and the expected function of such partnership. For this view, I'd like to propose two elements. The first is to make the guideline and the ideal image of the partnership, national partnership, not too detailed and restrictive. I say this because the best shape depends on the social condition and stakeholders of each country. And I'm not bright with English well, but I think that rather than guideline, it may work better in the shape of something like guidance or non-binding guideline. The second element is to highlight the benefits of building national partnership. It would be great if the partnership becomes to help countries tackle and solve their issues. I myself feel so glad to have this network, national network, to think together and step further, step forward together. Next, please. In order to obtain the understanding of stakeholders, SIPA materials are important tools. MOE, in cooperation with National Secretariat, have developed public awareness raising materials related to the EAAFP and distributed to the flyway network sites and also to the MOE regional environmental offices. Also, species group based materials for awareness raising were also published by the different groups. I think our national partnership still have a lot to improve and it will 
evolve with more interaction. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Tomoko. It was interesting, informative. I think it's inspired to the many of the country who doesn't have this national partnership uh, the structure. So thank you very much again. And then, well, thank you very much for the pointing out some of the challenges you have faced and there's some key element and suggestion we have to go for and then we'll take a note on it. And then of that, the one suggestion you made is to change the word of the guideline to the guidance also, we will take into it. And then I also really agree that uh, the identifying the core benefits through this development of the national partnership is the most important than any others. Because again, the, our EAPP is a voluntary partnership and then it is to really, the, we are the mission to, to giving out a core benefit to not only for the bird and the people in Lyon. So I think it has to be very beneficial of the, this process. It's not making another procedure, the formal procedure for the, everyone to make it complicated. So we will take a note on it. Thank you very much. So, and then uh, we are running out of time a little bit. So I would like to invite the next presenters, Mr. Uh, Ho Chun Bang, is from Singapore National Park. Uh, uh, okay, so Mr. House, uh, the floor is yours. And then the, he will uh, share with us some of the sister site program they have been running with a different country, not only the winner one country. So I'm sure there's one of the, uh, the most, uh, the, uh, the, the country that the, who have been there with the uh, sister site, the running of the sister site program for many times. So I hope that it's giving us the, some of the insight and then some of the understanding of the program. So Mr. Hao. <clears throat> Hello everybody, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Chun Bing and I'm covering for Shu Fun whose name appears in the, in the slide. Uh, next slide, please. A bit about myself, I was previously at Sungai Bulo and I'm now in another department. I'm handling currently wildlife conflicts in Singapore. Uh, but I, I could still give you a background on all the sister wetland sites that we have done uh, in Sungai Bulo's history. For those who are not familiar with where Singapore is, we are approximately in the center of the flyway uh, where the temperature is, is even, uh, that means it's hot throughout the year. And the birds that fly past us, uh, they are migrating to between the two polars of the, the flyway. So we get a lot of transit birds. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, and in this very small place, uh, that's called Singapore, we have an even smaller site that is Sungai Bulo. Uh, Doug, who is here with us, he knows how small this place is. When he was based in Sungai Bulo a few years ago, he would go for afternoon walks and just within lunchtime, he can actually cover the whole of Sungai Bulo. Uh, essentially what we are, uh, we are high tide roofs and we provide shelter for the birds, the migratory birds there to, to come here during the, when it's high tide out in the sea and the shores. Next slide. Well, Singapore is not actually the best example of a, of a country with national, uh, many other uh, flyway sites, because I mean, if I were to be honest, I think we have 100% participation from all our national flyway sites reporting to the national coordinator. And that is only because there's only one flyway site and we are all the same people. Uh, but nevertheless, while we do not have uh, numerous flyway sites, uh, we try to compensate this by actually reaching out to the people uh, within the country and also uh, abroad. Uh, why do we do that? That's because uh, one of the main problems that we have in Singapore, one of the main challenge is that for a site like Sungai Bulu to exist, uh, it has to meet a lot of competitive land uses. Uh, <clears throat> We have about six to seven million people in a very small place. Um, Singapore is about 40 over kilometers across. Now to actually cut out, cover a piece of land like that next to the coast and keep it for the birds, uh, it requires very strong justifications and a lot of buy-in. So what we do is that we they have determined that the entire population of uh, Singapore, all the people here, they are actually our stakeholders. And we want to convince the stakeholders that look, uh, this is our national heritage and it's something that you have to buy into 
is something that you have to believe in. And part of our job then to actually, is actually convince the people. Uh, and and, it's, and it's, Singapore is also unique because it's not just one site, which is a national heritage. It is one of the sites in Singapore where we realize that we are not just custodians of our own national heritage. We are actually watching out for, for international uh, uh, community. Uh, the birds that visit us uh, belongs to everybody. And that is something that we try very hard to communicate to people who come to Singapore. So they realize that it's not just when they protect Singapore, it's not just protecting on behalf of Singapore, they are actually contributing to an international effort. And so we have uh, in green educational programs, uh, connecting the people uh, in orange, and not just that, the part in yellow, these are all the relationships that we have internationally. So to go to the next slide. Now, uh, we, have had, we have been running the system wetland, uh, system wetlands uh, program for quite a few years. Uh, actively right now, uh, we have four major MOUs with, uh, first one is Chongming Dongtan, Shanghai, China, and then Hong Kong Wetland Park. Uh, and then in Malaysia, just across uh, about one, two kilometers away from Sungai Bulo is Pulau Kuku. And then lastly, we have Sachang County, uh, County, the Yubudo Tidal Flats. Next slide. So I'm gonna uh, go through a history of all, uh, of how, we, how the sister wetland sites uh, program has developed in Singapore. Uh, it first started uh, in 2008, and the first one was with our good friends in Hong Kong Wetland Park. Uh, this is still ongoing, however, it's taken a bit of a, uh, a hiatus because of what, uh, what's happening. Uh, essentially, we have a lot of schools from Singapore and uh, visiting Hong Kong to learn about how they manage the Hong Kong Wetland Park and how uh, it is differently managed from Singapore and what the other similarities are as well. And conversely, we have the schools from Hong Kong joining us in Singapore, carrying out visits. And there's a lot of youth exchange and uh, high energy uh, interactions. Next slide. And in 2012, we had uh, the visit by the administration of Sachang County. And the proposal was made that the two sites should then have uh, some exchanges. Uh, whilst we do not have uh, any record so far of birds actually visiting, uh, to connecting the two places, but we part of the MOU efforts actually to make sure that we can actually help other sites and vice versa and how they can help us through other means as well. Uh, for example, for Sachang County, one of the things that we wanted to do very much for them was to create awareness of the, the county's efforts in preserving their habitat or protecting their birds. And we wanted to promote uh, awareness of this site to the people in Singapore so that when they visit Korea, it will not just be the, the usual tourist spots, but to highlight to them that these are alternatives that they can actually venture to. Next slide. Uh, this was not really an MOU, but it's just to highlight in 2013, we actually had a conference with, uh, between a school in Singapore and a school in Russia. Uh, this was before the days where we had Zoom and all that. So it was a major event and uh, the setup was, was to uh, a lot of effort to create. Uh, and the two schools, they exchanged, they talk about the challenges uh, that their various, their respective wetlands face in their countries. Uh, in Singapore, we talk about what we are doing to improve our small mangrove which is to actually find out what's in the smart uh, and how we can continue to propagate the, the mangrove forest. Uh, in Russia, the students were sharing about how they have to tag birds and also their springtime hunting. Next slide. Uh, in 2014, there were further exchanges between Sochong and Singapore. Uh, as you can see from photographs here. Next slide. And uh, in 2017, we established MOU with uh, Shanghai Chongming Tongtan, uh, which is one of the biggest uh, wetland sites in China. Uh, we actually benefited a lot from this MOU because, uh, well, that was a year that we were trying to tag the windrows. And the windrows in Singapore were, were too smart for us. They were not coming to our nets. And we enlisted enlist, uh, enlist the help of that gentleman who's squatting there with, uh, squatting there with a pole. Uh, his name is Lao Qing, and he is one of the few people left in the world who actually using a homemade whistle could actually lure the wind blows down to the nets. 
uh, and he has been doing that for decades uh, back his hometown in Shanghai. Um, it's a family tradition that used previously was employed for hunting, but now he's using it to help in the conservation efforts. So he was invited and he came over with his colleague to Singapore to help lure our birds by whistling them down to our nets. Uh, we, unfortunately, the success was limited. Maybe the birds in Singapore were speaking a slightly different dialect, but nevertheless, we learned quite a lot of techniques from him and we were able to subsequently employ the same techniques in the, in the future seasons. Next slide. Uh, in turn, we also had a lot of uh, volunteers from Singapore uh, visit Lao Ting in his, in his uh, back home. And then uh, that was where we learned about how they managed the huge reserve that they had. Uh, it's on a scale that is that's totally different from what we experienced in Singapore. Uh, the, difficulties that they, the difficulties that they encounter uh, uh, I mean, we have so many different challenges. Uh, they have so many different challenges and they're all so different from what we are facing in Singapore, just simply because of the scale, the weather, uh, the manpower. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. And uh, this is something that we hope to continue having uh, when the situation opens up for travel. Next slide. Uh, one of our latest uh, MOU was with our, uh, just across the, the streets. Singapore is separated from the state of Johor, Malaysia by a very narrow streets. Uh, and over there, there's a small island, which is probably the largest mangrove island in Malaysia, uh, entirely made up of uh, mangrove strands. Uh, we were invited there to actually help out with some of the surveys and to see how they can improve conditions for migratory shorebirds. And MOU was established with Kukup in 2018. Next slide. And uh, apart from surveys, uh, there were also activities such as a mutual travel passport where visitors to Kukup -Kuk in Malaysia would earn stamps and then vice versa when they come to Singapore, they could get the same stamps. And upon completion of the stamps uh, of the passports, they do get some souvenirs. Next. Uh, it's not just with sites that we are trying to establish uh, MOUs with. We also look forward to establishing MOUs with uh, various institutions. And the first and only one that we have so far is with an NIE in Republic of Korea. Uh, this, was, this came about after mutual visits between the, the bosses of NIE and uh, National Park Singapore. Next slide. And as a fruit of that partnership in uh, 2018, uh, we actually uh, carried out uh, well, it was done online. It was a forum that we had uh, in the, and it was sh uh, shared and beam across to many people about our mutual uh, practices on improving carbon capacity in our sites. Next slide. And this was the, the meeting that I was talking about. Mm, it, it was quite a long one. Uh, there were about 400 of our participants, uh, international. And we had not just uh, our Korean partners, uh, we had the US and also the Arctic Council uh, members within this meeting. Next slide. Well, uh, this is the last slide that I have. Uh, we want to talk about how we can actually improve some of the partnerships we have. Uh, I think the partnerships uh, so far are uh, mostly uh, outreach and education in nature. I think there's scope for us to increase uh, the aspects of research and how we can actually improve on our uh, management capacity. Uh, we also think that we can be more targeted in some of our outreach efforts. Uh, some of the MOUs might be more specific for schools some of the MOUs might uh, involve other national research institutions as well. So, and I think the rest are quite natural, uh, promotion and publicity, and also with other initiatives like the ASEAN Flyway Network and also MB from the IP Council. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. And thank you for the giving us uh, some of the more idea for the improvement based on your experience. 
Uh, we have had one question from the audience, Jennifer. So, to you, so does the relationship continue between Singapore and Russian school? You mentioned that the school exchange program. So, uh, does the relationship continue still? Well, we have not uh, been in communication with the same school, but one of the fruits from that uh, interaction was that we have furthered our research collaboration with partners in Russia as well. And that has involved uh, mutual visits to understand the tracking of birds that visit both sites. Uh, adding on to that, uh, recent research in the last few years have shown that some of the birds uh, in Singapore are uh, also uh, actually nesting and breeding in many parts of Russia. Mm -hmm. And with that, uh, that leaves more space, more ground for and more reason for us to actually start connecting with these various sites. Thank you very much. So the, the other things that between Incheon and Hong Kong now, they are also trying to have uh, some bird school activity like between. So, I think so. Uh, the some of the idea we can reflect and then we will extract from the you, your the, the previous experience. So thank you very much, Mr. House. If there's any question to the the previous two speaker, Tomoko and Mr. Hall, if uh then please uh, uh raise your hand, uh by using the reaction emoji or you can leave the message here. Uh, do you have any additional com uh, comment or questions? So let me check. There is some. Okay. Uh, okay, I think there is no further question uh, on the speakers. So thank you very much, Tomoko Sang and the Mr. Hao, uh, to share the case studies. We will continue to, to discuss with you that in the process of developing this guideline. So thank you very much. So Next sessions, uh, we now so wanted to invite the docs uh, to facilitate this session is uh, uh, of the panel and open discussion. There will be the, some of the question, uh, probably it goes to the speakers and then some of the participants who are sitting in. So it doesn't need to be uh, very under pressure on this. Uh, you can just share the, what you uh, know uh, based on the, your knowledge. So I wanted to invite the doc to hear us. Uh, so uh, so we have, I think, 20 minutes to go so at the end of full circuit. So please uh, just uh, 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 please uh, keep being this uh, channel, so this uh, this screen, and then for the another 20 minutes, please. Uh, ducks, boys, and yours. Thank you very much, uh, Aison. Um, so here, um, we'd like to discuss three, uh, uh, three over overarching questions. Uh, firstly, about national partnership. And uh, our thoughts so far is that the national partnerships will differ between different countries because the government system is different, how society works is different. And so in our, in our guidelines, we will, we, uh, we will be quite flexible about the actual details of how this mechanism works. Um, but it would be useful to, to discuss a little bit here and to have feedback about how uh, a definition for what a national partnership is. Um, and so we welcome um, people posting uh, questions or, or also uh, posting your own thoughts about uh, how you would how you would define the national partnership that you see would be very useful um, in your country. Um, we, we heard in, uh, in detail about the national partnership in, in Japan or the, the mechanism. Um, I really see a national partnership as about a support mechanism to assist the national government partner. So it's a way where the national government partner can identify various groups of stakeholders from, for example, uh, the, the level of the sites and the site managers, uh, the level of the uh, academics and research uh, that's done for migratory waterbirds, 
and also the the non-government organizations and and the community volunteers uh, where there is a lot of people um, active in doing things so we do welcome you uh, really posting uh, some comments um, about uh, what do you think a national partnership could be for your for your country and this will help us um, in, in following up and in, in developing our, our guidelines for national partnerships. Um, secondly, uh, about the Flyway Network sites, um, we've heard a very good uh, presentation uh, from Singapore about the variety of, of uh, activities that they uh, are doing in their links to other flyway network sites. And you can see that there's quite a variety of activities. Um, a lot of initial uh, activities uh, have been linked to, to visits between uh, network sites, um, but we know at the, <clears throat> at the moment we can't travel, <clears throat> but also these are quite uh, costly to, to do and, and that, um, that does become a barrier for, uh, for, um, for an ongoing um, um, activity. Um, but I think we've, uh, well, we've already seen in the presentations a range of different uh, activities that the, uh, the site network can provide uh, to sites. Um, with our uh, sister site partnerships, um, this, uh, this is really a linking and developing a common interest between our network sites and, uh, and developing these links between communities in two different parts of the flyway. Um, so this is a, a really a way to, uh, to, to bring uh, the human element, to bring uh, people together um, about their shared uh, biodiversity. Um, and we'd very much like to uh, extend this uh, program of activities because it really brings meaning to both sites when they have a link to somewhere else in the flyway. <clears throat> and perhaps one of the, uh, the spin-offs from, from COVID um, is things like Zoom, is our ability to really be, to do more things online. Um, and I think with that technological tool now, it will make things much easier to, to link uh, network sites and, and potentially to have more um, activities where people from different sites can come together um, to share their experience and to find out about um, how different other areas are. So we really do look forward to you um, typing, some, uh, typing some messages to us with some thoughts that you have uh, in relation to, uh, to these th three areas. Um, that will help us uh, know uh, uh, whether there are opportunities to follow up um, and, and expand on those initial thoughts um, to incorporate them into uh, the guidelines. Now, I don't see any questions yet. So um, do people could, if people would like to ask a question, then, um, then please raise your hand um, and then uh, we, can, uh, we, can, we can take the questions verbally. No, it doesn't seem that we have many questions at the moment. Oh, yes, we do. Okay, can... Hi, Dr. Ted, I'm Pia Tan from uh, Thailand. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, if Thailand want to develop a more sister site. Right now we have no sister site, right? And uh, first of all, we can develop uh, the site in our country first, 
or we can develop the sister side from the lower Mekong country. Which one is better? So what I would encourage is, is for um, each side to think about um, uh, what, what the basis of the link is. And in this case, mm -hmm. you've talked about a region um, and a region that's quite similar. Um, the, the situations are quite similar between the countries. Um, an important element that we often pr promote is, is a species that you might share. Um, or so you might share a species which comes during the non-breeding season to both your sites. And so you can, uh, some of the foundation for that relationship is about this common uh, work to conserve that species during the non-breeding season. Um, in, some, in some cases or uh, already with our network sites, we have um, staging sites. So for sites uh, in East Asia, for example, Many of the birds from Southeast Asia and for Australasia will be stopping in, in the East Asian countries during their migration. So there, <clears throat> the, often the relationship links to that migration of the bird and that, um, th that the two sites working together to conserve the bird during the non-breeding season and during the migration. Um, so these are, these are some of the, the things you can think about in looking to identify uh, which sort of region you might like to link to. Um, and then the secretariat can very much help with uh, approaching another country and, and helping with developing a discussion about um, possibly setting up a, a, a network site between two different countries. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Now, these are the, the types of things that uh, we are working to get input on uh, for the guidelines. So for, for next MOP, um, we, we are working to, to produce um, uh, quite extensive guidelines about these different elements um, so that this will greatly help our national government partners um, in, in circulating material to their network sites or in, in working on developing their national partnership. Um, so I've just been told uh, Gareth has, uh, has asked a question here, yeah, Singapore. Uh, so which one? This one here, okay. He'd asked um, in uh, that they had found a number of situations where a country is looking for sister sites, but not aware of others also wanting sites. Uh, what role for the Secretariat or National Partnership to facilitate these inquiries to assist with linking? So, um, so certainly the, the Secretariat can, can assist uh, very significantly because of our, our network uh, through both our national government partners and also the background knowledge about the different sites. So we welcome approaches from, uh, uh, we welcome approaches about uh, linking, uh, site, linking, a, linking a site within your country to, uh, to another part of the flyway. Um, and we're very keen to assist you with, with doing that. Um, our request would be that you provide us with some guidance about the key elements you would like, what would you like to achieve from the partnership? Um, it could be about education and linking schools in with activities. It might be about shared species. Um, and it could also be about management of your site where there are issues about your management of your site and you would really like to link to another site which which, which may have uh, had much more experience at dealing with a management issue you have at your site. Um, like for example, um, development of walkways, um, public access facilities through your site to showcase it and how to uh, you know, develop your site to provide more education and awareness to your visitors. Um, and then we can use that to, to look for um, potential sites uh, in other countries that we can link you to. So that's very much something we're keen to, uh, to assist you with. Okay, some, some more questions. This one here, sorry. Uh, okay, 
So the, the, the suggestion I have here too has been made to me is that um, we, we welcome some of the, the, uh, the national government partners who may wish to share also their thoughts about how they went about linking their network site or what suggestions they have. Um, perhaps I could, could uh, suggest um, Chun Bin may uh, have some comments about that. That's a request to you, Chun Bin, if given uh, your experience with several the, sites. The, are you asking about the question that Chris had? So the question really about uh, how to uh, how to go about thinking about making a, a sister site link, the sorts of the sorts of and the decisions you make on it. Uh, yeah. You know, a, a lot a lot of that comes about from informal meetings, for example, during MOP when we have our smaller group discussions, and that gives us a chance to actually find out about specific issues and problems and preferences that uh, some of these sites might have. I think in the last two, three years, the focus actually has been on establishing uh, relationships with our uh, with sites within uh, Southeast Asia. And because I think that's, that's an area where we can help to connect people and to uh, help to funnel whatever assistance may be needed uh, and help them identify the issues that they face and how we can channel, help channel resources to address these issues. Uh, we are also uh, on quite a few other biodiversity and conservation platforms. Uh, and this help us to connect with uh, other sites and through a lot of time word of mouth, we come to hear about uh, particular sites that we can actually make form relationships with. And that, that is actually our main source of uh, information for and rationale for forming sister sites. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, perhaps we can, I'm just looking at these other things in the chat. Um, so, so at the moment we have um, Singapore and we have Japan with us that have sister sites. Um, any, these I think are the two main countries. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. So, uh, so one of the questions is about uh, uh, the interest um, to, from attendees about um, accessing information from the secretariat. So, so I'm interested uh, interested in any comments or some more comments about um, about if you are interested in following up on the sister site, um, um, and that will then we know that there is a, a partner there who is particularly interested in this at the moment, um, and then we can follow up more with you and help us in developing the guidelines. Uh, for linking of sister sites. So uh, I welcome um, any, any of our, our partners um, that, are, that are interested in this to, to just to, to uh, make a, some short comments about, about your interest. Okay, we tried. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, wow, um, that was a very big post to the chat. So let me just have a look at that one. Okay, okay. And so, so we have quite a, a, a long comment from Terry Townsend. Um, he's based in, in Beijing. Um, and he is uh, he he works with the uh, Paulson Institute. So the, in the chat, uh, you can see quite a long post from him, um, where he's providing his ideas about uh, about what's happening. Um, uh, Terry, if you're there, I welcome you uh, actually speaking to this point. If if you're if you're available to talk online. Yeah, thanks, Doug. I'm sorry to everyone for joining late. Um, I was on another call that overran. So um, I'm 
yeah, I missed some of the presentation, so I apologize if some of this has already been covered, but just on the, the point, I, I really like the idea of linking sites um, through species, and, you know, species that, that use both ends of the flyway or, or stopover sites. Um, and, you know, I've mentioned this before, I think, to others, but there's, there's already quite a lot of tracking going on in the, in the flyway, you know, and I think the Global Flyway Network, for example, Tunis's people are, are doing great work in you know, amazing discoveries on the journeys of some of these birds and the sites they use, really important for conservation. But when I see them getting named like 4BW7 or something like that, it, I sort of, <laughs> I, it makes my heart sink a bit because I think that there's so much potential to give that bird a name uh, from a local school, wherever that bird was first tagged or at a site that it uses on its migration. Um, you know, for example, if, if the bird is tagged in Australia and it regularly stops in the Yellow Sea uh, or Japan or Korea, you're one of those sort of um, stopover sites. And, and then Russia, you know, there's real opportunity to, to have uh, given real names from schools. Um, and then the schools can link up, you know, and we, we did something similar with the cuckoos in Mongolia where school children from Mongolia wrote to school children on Socotra Island, just off the African coast, the Somalian island, to say thank you for um, safe passage of their birds. And it, this and the, and the Socotran school children wrote back, um, you know, were astonished that they'd got letters from Mongolia, um, you know, somewhere <laughs> far away that they've, they've never even heard of, probably, um, let alone be able to find on a map. Um, and it ended up with an exchange uh, where they were talking about each other's biodiversity and how important it is. And the reason that was important on Socotra was it's actually a, a, a Yemeni island, there's civil war going on, and it's a World Heritage Site, but the World Heritage Site status is under threat because of what's happening. Um, and so raising this awareness and getting letters saying how important they're their places for birds, for migratory birds, and how it links all these uh, flyways, you know, was, was really, really powerful. And so I think the storytelling aspects of this um, is such an obvious thing to do for me, because you, you, you're doing this already for the science. Um, and so it's really easy to piggyback, uh, to, to involve the public, um, particularly schools. Um, so it'd be, it'd be very little extra effort and cost, um, but I think have huge um, impact potentially. You know, and I think increasingly the media is also interested in, in these types of stories, you know, and as biodiversity goes up the political agenda, you know, I'm seeing a lot more interest in, in embassies, diplomats and foreign policy uh, in these areas as well. So I think there could be support there because, you know, you're linking countries in a very safe way on a very safe issue, um, you know, that, really helps to these countries to engage when they have difficulties in other areas. So it's just a, an observation. I hope it helps. Thank you very much, Terry. Um, see, it's great to have Terry uh, involved in the conversation because he introduces us to, to quite uh, new ways of, of using our network. Um, and you know this is a uh, this is not a one to one type relationship. This is taking on some project activities that can involve many uh, network sites and framing our activities in ways which resonate with with the, with the public. Uh, um, and so you know we can do much more than we have been doing to date. Uh, our our activities are being quite constrained, but by thinking imaginatively, uh, there are there are uh, many new things that we could do. I think we, uh, we need to move forward now because we're, we're uh, running out of our time, um, but we have an announcement to, to make. Uh, Doug, so can you yeah, sorry. there's a number of that things, the questions still are coming. So I see the Tomoko was raising hand <laughs> for that. Okay. Already, so uh, can we invite Tomoko still just uh, for the last comment? Thank you, Hassan. 
Um, I totally agree with the idea of the species. Um, as I mentioned in the national partnership part, the species group works the best in when I observe the um, national partnership implementation. And also we have a few sister site twinnings between other countries and uh, the one without common species, obviously common species, it doesn't uh, develop very fast. And this can see kind of struggle. And also um, in, in the, uh, within the country, a few sites are trying to do the national sister sites, something like national sister sites. And I really like this idea too, because they share the same species. And one of the sister sites between Japan and Australia, may, uh, some of the volunteer went to see the, uh, went to um, join the uh, bird tagging and uh, they came back to Japan and they are really keen to follow up these activities. And when the bird really came, they were really happy and uh, they were motivated. And, but uh, another thing I would like to um, point out is even we share the same, same species, there, I, there is a language barrier. I, a few times I tried to encourage those um, shared species uh, sites, but uh, some of them really hesitated to do it because they don't have the capacity. And so we even encouraged like, okay, use Google Translate, it's really good, but uh, they really hesitated. So if this kind of, um, uh, how to say, support from, I don't know, from some experts or locally, like also from the government section, other from the other um, like international exchange um, sections, this kind of information may help encourage the site managers to go proceed. Thank you. Sorry, I need to leave now. Okay, uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, um, very good to have Tomoko-san uh, uh, involved uh, in, in this webinar. Um, I, I would like, we've had a comment from, from Wasua, which is a, a flyway network site in, in uh, West Papua. Um, and I would welcome um, Abrindo speaking to it. If he could unmute himself. Uh, okay, thank you, Doug. Uh, I think we are here. Uh, what we really want to make a flyway network site. However, uh, we should uh, consulting with uh, central government. In, in here, I mean uh, uh, Ministry of Environment and Forestry. So there are as a focal point in Indonesia, and then national park as a, a like a, just a field officer. So. When we making a, a sister site partnership, uh, mostly done in uh, Jakarta, yeah. in central government, I mean. So when that's why uh, in uh, chat room I make it. Uh, how if uh, the decision making is direct to a site manager? So. Uh, in our opinion, uh, that when it's direct to our side, and then we know our side how we work, and then how we uh, making it, so it's more uh, available for us if we can cut it uh, the uh, bureaucracy. So if, if there is only like, like now the bureaucracy, we should take from uh, central and then. Uh, coming down to site managers in here is uh, Wasser National Park. So uh, for now, that's why only like a stack on, uh, there is no move on. So there's a wheel stop on Jakarta, uh, only that. Yeah. Well, we please do. 
please do send me uh, an email um, and we're okay. keen to follow up with you and we're keen to help you with that with those steps that through through government um, okay. and also we can um, um, speak to a couple of the INGOs, the NGOs uh, in, in Indonesia as well, who I'm sure will be very keen to assist as well. Um, we, um, Indonesia does have a, 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 a sort of a national partnership mechanism. Um, and so uh, this will be a good, a good exercise to, uh, to see how the Secretariat can actually help an, a specific site uh, in in exploring a, a sister site relationship, so okay. um, I look forward to your email. Okay, thank, thank you. you. I will send you an email. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're running out of time. We have some um, announcements uh, to make. Um, if we can have the slides. Slide. Okay, so just recently, uh, you've heard for some time about the Asian Development Bank um, developing a regional flyway initiative. Um, this will be uh, and this is a different type of initiative. In this case, it's a financing initiative and it will be formally launched at CBD uh, COP15. Um, next slide. Is that all there is. Um, we, they have just released a flyer um, about with information about this initiative, um, which we will be circulating soon to, uh, to all of our, our partners. And, so this is a very uh, uh, exciting opportunity um, where there will be some grant funding and other loan funding uh, available for, um, for the um, improved management and, and particularly restoration of, of degraded wetland sites that are of international importance for migratory waterbirds. So we'll have more uh, to come on this in, uh, in uh, next week with, with circulating the two page uh, flyer to, our, to all of our partners. Um, and we uh, look forward to its, uh, its, its launch at CBD. Um, and then um, there'll be much more follow up happening uh, with ministries of environment and ministries of finance in the, in the eligible countries uh, which are, are particularly in, in Southeast Asia. So thank you uh, very much. Um, Hyson, were you wishing to finish off? Yeah. So thank you very much, Doc, for the facilitation of the session and then just uh, giving us the, another the information and update of the ADB, the Flower Initiative, which is very exciting. And then we will try to update you of this regard separately to country partner, but we thought that with this chance, since we have like around the 10 country members here. So we uh, wanted to update you that the progress of the ADB initiative, which you have been uh, informing to us, uh, to you before. So thank you very much for the, your attention and the participation uh, for one and a half hours. And then if uh, um, uh, you join, you can move to the, the previous slide uh, showing the, our context. So if you have additional comment or additional some question, or any interest in uh, making a sister site or any regard, please contact me. Or the, uh, you just can you show the, the email account of Jennifer? And yes, this one, thank you. So the, please contact to pro, our product consultant Jennifer is here and then contact secretary, uh, contact me, so whoever it is. So we are very, uh, we are available to talk to you uh, whenever needed. And then as we announced at the beginning, the timeline is our uh, goals for another four months. So we will try to approach to you individually. So please accept our invitation, <laughs> uh, the call or the email that we wish that we will have a more chance to talk and they wanted to understand more of the, your, the government structure and then some of the idea and we are happy secretary and partnership and then some of the member and observer today sitting here will help to the process as well. So thank you very much and have a very good evening, morning, afternoon <laughs> in the world. In here is so your afternoon. So uh, have a good weekend ahead and uh, wish we can meet you somewhere 
in the next webinar or the, the mop next year. So thank you very much for today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you.